Hello, my name is Yuki Nye, and the topic I will be going over today is on cotton mills. The first ever American cotton mill began operation on December 20, 1790. What the cotton mill do is a machine cuts cotton by combing and untangling fibers while removing short and desirable fibers. In the spinning process, the fibers are drawn out, twisted, and wanded to create a thread or a yarn. So you may wonder, what do you do in the cotton mill as a factory workers? As it was stated earlier, a cotton mill is a building that houses bean or weaving machinery for producing of yarn or cloth from cotton. And cotton was an important practice during the Industrial Revolution. In the development of factory system, and cotton was so important during those times because the factory workers will often transport, sell, trade the goods to the west, north, east, and south. And it was also used for clothing. If you wonder what was the working condition like in cotton mills, it was a very terrible environment to be working in, and it is not a very environment suitable for your health either. The air in the cotton mills had to be kept hot and humid, which is about 65 to 80 degrees, and they had to do that in order to prevent the thread from breaking. In such these conditions, it was no wonder or surprise that workers will often get sick and suffer from many illness. The air in the cotton mill was thick with cotton dust, which lead a lot of workers to suffer from lung diseases. Not only the working environment was very badly, workers were also paid poorly. On the average, women will earn between three to four dollars per week, and the men will earn between four dollars to four dollars and fifty cents per week. So, if we do a math, that is about fifteen to eighteen dollar income per month. And for most factories, they go by weekly pay, and workers usually work for six days, twelve hours a day and they will often get one day off. So for example, they will be working 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. working shift for six days straight and they will take a day off and then go back to work. So pretty much they will live in and come into work 6 in the morning, leave at 6 in the evening and get home, sleep, come back to work again at 6 for six days a week. Sometimes they will even work 14 to 16 hours a day. So if you think about it, most of these workers were spending all their time working at the cotton mill factories with low payments. For some factories, it is required to wear uniforms, such as aprons and caps. And for some factories, women will often wear aprons to prevent their clothing from getting dirty while being on the job. Let me draw your attention to this photograph. As you can see in the photograph that is shown on the screen, women and children are working. This right here is a spinning room. And most of the spinning room at the factories are filled with female workers and sometimes older women would work as weavers or drawing in hands while little kids, almost usually boys, work as doofers or sweepers and older men would work as weaver, loom fixer, carter or supervisor. They also rely on the family labor system. If you don't know what family labor system it is where factory owners will have the whole family working there. So, 
that includes father, mother, and kids working in the industry. The industry grew depend to a large extent on the labor of children. In the year between 1880 and 1910, manufacturers reported that about one quarter of their workforce was under 16 years of age, and many more child workers went underreported. In the industry early years, kids as young as seven or eight were commonly already working in the industry and did all sorts of casual labor. This was pretty common back in the days. And as well as in the family labor system, the boys would work as doofers or sweepers, doofers to someone who removed boobins, prints, and spiral holder spring fibers such as cotton or wool from a spring flame and replace them with empty ones. And the sweepers to someone who sweep the floor, mop the floor, and for men, which often is the father, work as the weavers, loom fixer, carters, or supervisors. Weavers are someone who weave fabric, and loom fixer are the one who adjusts and repairs the looms. If you don't know what loom is, they are the machines that they use for making fabrics by weaving a yarn or a thread. Carters are people who cut walls, and people who repair looms are the one who fix the machines if there is anything wrong with them. The role of the supervisor is usually given to a higher class man. During this time, labor system like this was very common. And it was mainly because families were surviving and the factory's owners were profiting off them. And most of the workers were proud of their work too. In the early 1834, nearly 1.5 million of people were reported as working in the cotton mills. And that is the only people that is reported. There are still young children and a lot of people who were working who were not reported. Focusing back on child labor, children were already working at nine or even as young as six, they will often give food and an hour of schooling a week by the factories. The hours were long and the mills were noisy, hot, dusty, and dangerous place for the kids to be working. A lot of medical records reveals that a lot of young children died and suffered because of child labor. Some of the children were often crawl under a machinery to pick up cotton, clean up, and they will often work at 14 hours a day, six days a week again. And most of the kids will often lose their hands or limbs. Others will crash under machines, and there were a lot of deaths reported. Most of these factories focusing on child labor because the industrial revolution saw the rise of factories and needs of worker and the children were their ideal employees because they could be paid less and they were a lot smaller so they could crawl up under machines or fix anything if it was needed even though it was dangerous for the kids. It is shocking to know that in most cases the parents or relatives of the children coming from socially backwards families push them towards child laborers. In many cases, children are forced to quit school and work in order to earn and support money for their family. Since they were working 14 hours a day, many of the children have physical deformities because of the lack of exercise and sunlight. The use of children as labor for such a long hour with little pay 
led to formation of labor unions. But again, this type of labor was normalized and common back in the day because the mills completely changed how people dress and the way they decorated and fixed their homes. By the 1830s, ordinary people could afford more clothing and proper wear. Lastly, the Factory Act of 1833 put rules and restrictions to the factory owners who hires child laborers. It was restricted the working day in Texas mills to 12 hours for person aged to 13 through 17 and 8 hours for those who age between 9 to 12. Child labor was officially and finally ended in the late 1930s. In response to those setbacks, Congress on June 2, 1924, approved a constitutional amendment that would authorize Congress to regulate labor as a person under 18 years of age, and it was submitted to the state for revocations. Although through this day, there are child labor still ongoing in some places and countries, it is good that child labor doesn't work like it used to be. Thank you for watching.